<laughs> you know, success comes so easy to some people like myself. And it certainly <laughs> has found my first guest, who is one of the great, uh, just uh, blazing hot stand-ups in New York City right now. She's a brilliant writer and a terrific humanitarian. Let's please bring to the stage Naomi Ekperigan. <laughs> Terrific. Naomi, how are you? I'm great, Dale. How are you? I'm doing great. Congratulations, first of all, uh, on a terrific end to season two of Broad City. Thank uh, you. Four and three and two and one. <laughs> right? That's what all the kids sing. And that's a wonderful show that you're, uh, you're working on. And I got to thank you for just giving it. You open the season with a terrific snapshot of New York going through the atrocities of the subway. <laughs> you had a sequence there, and you ended on a walk in St. Mark's, just quintessentially New York experiences. Yeah, that's what we try to do, you know? We all just pool together our years of hardship and struggle and functional alcoholism, you know, and we say, <laughs> Tell me about it. get it on the big screen, the yeah. medium screen, you know. Well, you capture it on all screens as far as I'm concerned. And uh, is that a fun job to have, a good, or is it just a job? Oh, it's a fun job to have. Come yeah. on. Yeah, right? Come on. You're going to be back for season three? You know it. Yeah. In two weeks, we're going to get this party started. Really? Well, yeah. that's a fast turnaround for that, isn't it? Oh, yeah. These girls, they don't sleep. You no, know? they're very... Uh, Kind of rambunctious, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> They're frisky. But so much is going right for you, Naomi, and uh, I want to congratulate you, of course. Are you uh, engaged? I am, yes. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, guys. That, uh, that I am off the streets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Finally, we're all worried about you. Thank you. And uh, you are, uh, uh, Christine, can we have the lights up a little bit? I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I'm feeling like I'm in a, a more romantic situation than I intended to be. But uh, Naomi, uh, the, you are, you've been engaged, engaged for a while. Oh yeah. yeah, you know, two years, you just want to let it marinate. You know, <laughs> you want right. to make sure you're in the right place. You want to hope you'll fall into money. You know, and then you get you realize that's not how life works. No, and, and uh, how was the engagement? Because I know you're a fiance, uh, yes. Andy. Well, uh, um, I would prefer um, if in all sort of outlets of this nature, yeah. you refer to him as Jubu. Okay, <laughs> Jubu. Uh, Jubu, Jewish boo. All right. I, I got you. Thank you. I got you. Thank you. So Jubu, I know uh, a little bit. And uh, I imagine that the engagement, uh, I don't know if he baked something in a cupcake or something, <laughs> but as I, in my mind, he was just shouting at you and maybe riffing on puns about pop culture <laughs> from the 90s. How did it go down? Um, you know what, Dale? It was real simple. Oh, it was like, hey, come in here. You want to marry me? And I said, yes. <laughs> Can you imagine? You like the guy that gets to the point, don't you? <laughs> he, said, he said it was burning a hole in his pocket, yep. and he was like, take this ring. And I said, where'd you get it? I spent the first five minutes saying, where'd you get it? What happened? I had no idea. I was like, I know you broke, so where'd you get it? You know what I mean? You thought, I was it, was you thought it was stolen? I wondered. I worried. Yep. <laughs> you know, I did. Uh, yeah. I'm not trying to be an accessory. No, you know? I, I get it. <laughs> Well, it's, it's wonderful you locked him down. And the Jewish uh, faith is, of course, one we celebrate here on the program. But uh, <laughs> he, he, he's, from, uh, he's from Pennsylvania, a Jewish kid from Pennsylvania. Yes. And uh, I think that's okay in my book. I know a, a couple of fellows out there uh, of the same persuasion. One of them manages the deli counter at Wegmans. So, uh, Wegmans, yeah. I know what that is now. Yeah, kind of a regional specific joke for they, our Pennsylvania listeners. But They have great whitefish salad. They do. Yes, they do. because like, I'm becoming a Jewish wife, you know, so I'm learning, like, what are the best white fish salads? Yeah. I'm learning, yeah. when is a bagel stale? I'm learning... Yeah, pretty, you, pretty quickly. Pretty quickly, <laughs> I discovered. Yeah. I just toast them up. You know, I yeah. toast up a bagel, it lasts for a solid week. No, the chosen people do not like that. No. They're like, two days, throw it out. <laughs> I right. toast that bitch after day five, you know? <laughs> Oh, well, isn't that amazing how cultures deal with things differently? Uh, <laughs> 
that I, well, who buys the day old though? You would. I don't buy it a day old. Yeah. It's that, let's say I buy like a pack of bagels. You're not going to throw it away. One, I'm not going to eat a whole pack of bagels in a day. Right? That's, that's fair. No, I, I think Thank I, you. Yeah. If they did not sell them in six packs like beers, I would perhaps buy fewer bagels. <laughs> that's good. This is all solid knowledge, and I'm glad we're getting into it. But uh, no, <laughs> you're going to get a, a how, you're going to get a, when's the date? Oh, I don't know, Dale. When should it be? <laughs> well, <laughs> most people like the June. I myself had a fall, and it still uh, ended up in shambles, so I don't know that there's an actual... <laughs> <laughs> it all ends. It all ends. Just kind of just pick your uh, plot, you know. <laughs> but you're searching for a venue now, I gather. It's yes. an expensive deal. It's, it's hard to find. Woo. Yeah. You know, I feel, you know, all the magazines and the blogs and the Tumblers and the Pinterest pages act like yeah. it's the most magical day of your life. Those girls must all be rich. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because if you ain't got money, this is a damn production. Yeah. This is like some arts and crafts with an evite, with some origami, <laughs> with some double-sided tape trying to make magic happen. You know? Uh, <laughs> sure. You know, it's a shame it can't be more like what an interstate travel where you're maybe you get you're on a long trip for a while and you get behind a big uh, rig or something and you just kind of dr dr you take the draft you kind of you drift along along with it and it helps you with the speed and the efficiency if you could just go in where a wedding is already happening and just kind of follow through on the tail I bet you'd right. save a little little money that save way. a little dough yeah yeah be like, who knows oh, don't pack up those leftovers we got <laughs> Away. That's right. But now, Naomi, you, uh, of course, we met in your hallway. That yes. was, uh, which incidentally is often the way you can tell that's my misconnections ad on Craigslist. <laughs> you, beautiful lady, me in hallway. But um, it was great to see you. You live up in Harlem. I do. And you, uh, you grew up there too. Yeah, born and raised. But then went to school in the Upper East Side. Oh, it happens, you know. Yeah. It happens when you're trying to get a real education. <laughs> That's right. Your mom says, why are these teachers making you grade the tests? Yep. I'm going to get you in one of those fancy schools. You'll be real smart, but you'll hate yourself. You know? <laughs> it's like the trade-off. It's the trade-off. Seems, seems like it worked out well. I, uh, it was an easy transition to from Harlem to Upper East Side. Seems Absolutely pretty... Absolutely not. I grew up in a pre-gentrified Harlem. Oh, okay. You know, Harlem now, it wouldn't make much of a difference. Yeah. But, you know, back in my day... Woo, woo. Do you know my first day of school, someone came up to me and said, I know how to rap. And then proceeded <laughs> to recite the Fresh Prince of Bel Air theme song, apropos of nothing. That is a good, like literally, I'm good standing rap. there, new and brown and confused. Uh, yeah. She was like, I know how to rap in West Philadelphia. I was like, Congratulations. Yeah. You know. One of our great rap songs, though. <laughs> that is true. That is true. It's in the canon. I know. He really, he really was a cross-cultural phenomenon, he brought people together, yeah. you know? He was the black male Selena. <laughs> original Selena, not I'll Gomez, I'll just take to clarify. It. I'll take it. No, yes, original Selena. I only talk in original <laughs> Selena terms. I, my first job was up there on the Upper East Side. I, was, uh, I watched the tasting spoons at Hale and Hardy up there at 64th and Lex. <laughs> was that a full-time job? It, it was a full-time job. You see the people there, they take taste of everything. <laughs> Corn chowder was my chowder. That's a solid one for any day. Cold, warm weather, doesn't matter. Have a corn chowder. Even in, a war in warm weather? Even in warm weather, oh yeah. Mm. I love it, that's what they say. You have the hot things when it's warm, you know? Who says that? Well, I think people that travel abroad <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah. I'll, I'll try that. You should, yeah, definitely. Let me know. Yeah. Post it somewhere. And uh, how, how, how early were you into comedy? Um, I started doing comedy in college. I did improv. That was like my first time I even knew, oh, I could actually do it. Of course, I knew it existed and I saw people, but I thought there was some sort of secret society that yeah. like, had to usher you in in order for you to do it. And then you get to college and you realize any old butthole can do it. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, let's try this game. And so it was through improv that I got into stand-up. 
you know, and that's that's really where the magic happened for me emotionally. Okay, sure. I'm not talking about cash and prizes. I'm talking about my soul. Telling your truths. You know? Telling your truth. Absolutely. Exactly. You know, for a while, um, I had a blog, and my moniker was Sojourner, You Can't Handle the Truth. <laughs> and I really feel like that's what I latched on to in my stand-up. You get it, Dale. I get it. <laughs> I so get it. Oh, my God. I've been to a lot of Black History Month events, yeah. so I get that's it. That's great. Who's your so favorite abolitionist? Oh, that's a good question. I'm a big uh, Tubman fan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, HG, I mean, how, HG. Can you, how can you not be? Yeah, yeah. yeah she's got all the moves. <laughs> Douglas for the hair. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Loving extra. that deep side part. Yeah. You know, that side Thank part you. on Frederick. I met Frederick you Douglass. See why. See why. <laughs> oh, yes, him too. <laughs> he but, had a deep uh, side part. If you look so, at his autobiography, always a deep side yes, part. Yes, no, yes. Uh, he definitely inspires me to this day. Now, uh, you, uh, I, are you sorry that Starbucks ended the conversation on race, by the way? Oh, no, I praise black Jesus. I thank him. I thank him it's over. That was real awkward. I don't know. Between the great literature on Chipotle bags mm. and that, I felt like I was really getting somewhere. Right. <laughs> getting somewhere on your own personal journey <laughs> that's, of that's discovery. Right. That's right. Yeah. You're maybe making MFA not worth it, you know. Right. Just go that path. But now, were you really up for something at SNL? Was that, you, there was a lot of like uh, chatter about that. There was so much, it was very like America's Next Top Black Girl. Yeah. You know what I mean? When that was all going down. <laughs> yes. My name was in a couple of internet lists. Yeah. You know, but I didn't get a call. That wouldn't have been for me, Dale. No, I, I don't like pressure of that sort. I cannot do impressions. <laughs> and I yeah. don't want, I'm, I don't want to be the first black anything. Too much pressure, too much work, so little rock nine, you know? I do know. I've, I will never be the first black anything myself. I, and that's what makes your life so easy. Well, <laughs> it's not without its hassles. <laughs> <laughs> I get into it sometimes, you can imagine. Yeah, I bet you mix it up, like At the Metropolitan Museum, they ask you, it's a suggested donation. Well, it's free. <laughs> but then you have to have an interaction with the person and then you end up paying $25. That's what I'll pay because I don't want to have conflict in my life. So I'll just pay it. But really, that's a free institution. People should just be walking in and out of there. I agree. So, yeah, my, I'm not saying that's equal to the struggles of African <laughs> Americans. But I'm glad that things turned out the way that they did for you. And I'm, so, I'm you. thrilled for all of your success. You have something coming up? What's coming up? Well, the third Tuesday of every month, Jubu and I host In Stereo. Yes, this is something you host with your uh, fiancé, yes. soon be husband. Yes, we have duos, two comedians who are friends, siblings, married, in a relationship, exes. That's fun. Do a set together. That's yeah. the third Tuesday of every month at High Five Bar, right here in Manhattan. That's terrific. I used to perform with my wife. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> What, what happened? That didn't go well. <laughs> but I'm glad you're still optimistic, and I'm glad that you uh, were here uh, for this, Naomi. It's a pleasure to meet you and talk with you. So no, Naomi Ekperigan, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Can just uh, slide down as far as